Hello, my loves. Welcome back. Today, we're going to do a part two of the doctor poisoned my baby with a prescription that he told me was benign and wasn't absorbed into the bloodstream. If you guys missed my first video, it's all about dealing with my baby's constipation. One in five children is chronically constipated, so this wasn't a unique issue to me. But if you missed that video, I'll post it up there in the cards and or in the description box below. My baby was poisoned and he developed ticks, almost like a Tourette's type of tick. Didn't know what it was from. I kind of pieced it together and then doing some research, I found a group, parents against this medication. I was calling it miracle laxative because I didn't want to say it in that video. Go in the comments of the other video, it's there, or you could piece it together. But number one, I wanted to give you an update. Number two, I wanted to tell you the supplements we've been using and the foods that we eliminated and then added to help with the issue in case you have the issue or a child with the issue and you could do it in the most natural, clean way possible. That's why we're in the kitchen. That's why the lighting is terrible. I broke my $400 ring light. I wasn't the one that broke it but we won't blame anybody who might be taking a nap sleeping right now. It is what it is, it's fine. Okay, so first thing, I threw away that bottle of the Miracle Laxative the minute I found out that it was doing that issue. That was in the garbage, it is long gone. I have not used it since. I did have somebody reach out to me that was beside herself. She was so upset because either she was on it or a family member was on it. I don't remember exactly what it was who's a grown adult. And she said she's not experiencing any issues. So for me personally, I am not a doctor. I don't have any medical experience aside from my degree in sports medicine that I don't really use for my job. I do study supplements and that kind of stuff, but I don't have any education formally behind it. Nutrition, like bodybuilding, all of that type of stuff. But my whole point is, that's up to you. If you're not having any issues from it and you're an adult, then I think proceed with caution, do your research and make your own educated decision after speaking to your medical providers, taking from that what it's worth. Would I personally ever take it again? No. Would I personally, personally ever give it to my child again? Absolutely not. Would I personally, that's a hard word to say, personally advocate to anybody that is in my life, you guys, internet aunties and best friends or my family members, I would advocate for you not or them not to take it. But honestly, it's up to you as an adult if you're not having a reaction to make your own educated, informed decision. Why am I slurring? It's coffee, I'm telling you. Decision, but I can't tell you what you should and should not do. Now, I can tell you this. I found something that is a natural alternative but does the same thing. It has the same mechanism. It's just not antifreeze we're putting in our bodies. We'll get there. First thing that I have on my little counter of tricks for my baby, you've seen this area before. It is my coffee espresso area, but I also just keep the baby's stuff up here so I remember to do it every day. Not that I'll forget this poor baby. So I started with a probiotic for my baby. I use the Culturelle brand only because in my research, I can't tell you if this is right or wrong, it's what I found. Apparently the strain of probiotic in here is the one that has been studied by doctors the most in children. If you guys know of something better, let me know in the comments below. Also, while we're here, the comments in the other video and the Instagram messages I got, you guys are amazing. I love every single one of you. We can potentially go through some of those at the end of this video if there's time, if I'm not like, rambling like I always do and respond to some of those. But if you guys know of anything better, I don't see that this says organic, which, you know, I, I prefer for my baby, but these are, come on, focus, probiotic and vitamin D drops by the brand Culturelle. I did the, make the mistake though of getting the kid's version with fiber. It wasn't drops. It was a little packet and that actually constipated him more because with all that extra fiber, he wasn't getting extra liquid. He just doesn't love to drink water. He spits it out. He doesn't really know how to drink it yet. So that just balled up in his stomach and it was the worst of the worst of his constipation. So just FYI, it's the baby drops, five under his tongue. They must not taste bad because he asks for more. I don't give him more, but he asks for more. He really likes it. That's every single day. I was advised to try magnesium. I have two different versions, so let me back up. There's five, I think, different types of magnesium, caltrate, carbonate, uh, I don't know, all of them. But this type of magnesium in the Calm brand 
is magnesium carbonate. By the way, this is the unflavored, it's just a white powder that dissolves. You have to dissolve it in hot liquid. I'll run it through the espresso pot, the hot water, because the hot water is a completely separate mechanism. There, why is that my word of the video? <laughs> but the hot water is completely separate. It doesn't go anywhere near the coffee grinds, which are over there. When I used to make this for myself before I had an espresso pot, way, way back many years ago, I would run it through my Keurig. The water goes through the same part that the coffee does, so sometimes it would come out brown. I don't wanna give my baby cat so you could do that you could put water on the stove if you're a microwave user you could put it in the microwave any way you want to warm the water now what you're gonna do is for me personally I put the water in the cup first not the medicine in the cup first for me I find it doesn't fizzle over as much a little water you measure it based off of the baby's weight the height etc for him I do a half a teaspoon if his constipation is really bad and then we'll go back down to a quarter of a teaspoon a half a teaspoon in a little bit of water and it's gonna fizz, 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 fizz. If you put too much, it'll fizz over. So just be careful, go slow. You wait for it to stop fizzing. It's gonna go back down. They could drink it like that when it cools off or what I do is I just mix it right into his bottle. For you, for me, when I took this, I got the raspberry lemonade flavor. I like the taste, it's strong though. So for the baby, I won't do that. It's natural flavors. That's a trick with marketing, you guys. Natural flavors are fake, they're made in a lab. I don't want to give that to my baby. So I just use this. You cannot take this type of magnesium every single day you just can't your body can't process it like that so what I do is I save this when he's really bound up because we're still fixing the constipation right now I have to use it about once a week I'm hoping to get to the point where I don't have to use it anymore you can do a full clean out with this so if you've been on for a long time oh if you've been on the miracle laxative for a long time or your older child has, there's a chart by I think age and weight. I think I'll put it in the description box below. You can Google it if I forget or somebody remind me in the comments because you know, mom life, still not sleeping mom life. That's actually been getting better too since we took him off of the miracle laxative that makes them not sleep. Yes, there's a chart. You could do the amount for you or your child based off of age every two hours until they have a bowel movement. It's gonna be liquid and it runs clear, kind of like a colonoscopy. Prep, the prep for the colonoscopy, I don't do that for my baby personally. I would not do that for a toddler or below. It could cause dehydration and especially in a baby that can't tell you. I just think that that could be more dangerous than not. So look into the clean out if your child's older or if you're older and you need this. But if not, I just use this as a last resort. I'll do a half a teaspoon in his night bottle because it's calm, it helps you sleep. If that doesn't work, then the following day I'll do, typically it works, but sometimes he gets a little bit too bound up. I'll do morning bottle. The next day, if that doesn't work, half a teaspoon. Usually that'll work and he'll give me a really good nap and then he's fine. But if not, then we'll do the evening bottle again. Now, if in the morning bottle, it causes a BM, but it's not a full clean out, then I'll do a quarter of a teaspoon. You just play with it for what works, but this is about once a week. It's not like I have to give it to him every Tuesday. I give it to him when he is showing signs of being backed up pretty bad, then this one goes in. This is another form of magnesium. It doesn't come like this. User issue, drop the bottle and broke the top. It's just a plastic twist on bottle. It was white if you care. This I ordered online. It's Omni Blue Ocean Minerals. It's also magnesium, but this can be taken every single day. The ocean minerals are minerals that we used to have in our soil, but in recent years, our soil's kind of gone downhill with the fertilizers and all of that stuff. So we don't get this in our bodies naturally. So this is magnesium, what type of magnesium? This is magnesium, someone needs glasses. I'm not positive, but look up on the website. This one goes by age. It's right on the bottle, the directions. Like as an adult, I can take up to a teaspoon and a half. For his age, it's from six to 10 drops spaced throughout the day. So I'll put about two to three drops in every bottle and we're two to three bottles a day. A fair warning, some people said this has no taste. They must have no taste buds. It tastes awful and I feel terrible. I didn't realize that I should have tasted it first. From this on, I do. I taste everything first, poor baby. I gave him his couple of drops, dropped right into his mouth, just like I do the probiotics and that's fine. And he screamed like, Pah! and he spit and then he was like saliva was coming out of his mouth. So I'm like, what's going on? I tasted it, literally took my breath away. It's salty, but it's like, it's bad. 
So you have to mask it. A lot of people mask it in juice, in different ways, like they'll put it in food. Some people say they cook with it and they use this to salt their food. In my opinion, I tried it one night. It gives it a fishy flavor, just not for me. This is great for everybody. I only took it once because this is for my baby and it made me ravenous the next day, which they say is a good thing. And it's good because I've noticed since I've been giving it to the baby, it's increased his appetite and he's already a skinny guy and he didn't have much of an appetite while he was constipated because he's constantly full. So his appetite has increased tremendously. Great for a developing child. Number one and number two, it actually bloated me a little bit because of the salt in there. I could look past that kind of stuff if it was something that I needed, but I don't. I take a different type of magnesium every night. I've been for years. So this one is an everyday thing. Now, when you start it, if it's for chronic constipation, you need to mix it with something else because it could take about two weeks for it to kick in and start working. So I gave him this and then the calm magnesium when he needed it, but this is still going in his bottle because two weeks. Make sense? Somebody had in one of like the parents against groups. She started using this for her around eight year old and she started giving it to him before every meal. He developed ticks from the miracle laxative and they are completely gone. I reached out to the company and asked if this was safe for a toddler and they gave me an understandably very generic answer like you have to speak to your doctor. <laughs> My doctor's the one that prescribed that miracle laxative so we're not going there. I just researched each ingredient individually. There's only three very clean ingredients in here. There's chicory, which is similar to dandelion. There's dandelion. And then there's amla, which is an Indian berry. All of these are really, really good ingredients, very clean, but they could also be diuretics. Like that's the point, right? They're really good for your gut health and your digestion, but I don't want my baby to get dehydrated. My dose for an adult, I think is a teaspoon. His dose, I only give him a quarter. I give it to him in a bottle. It's actually, it's good. It's like a very faint, not very sweet touch of lemonade if you wanted to do it in water. I thought this was great. If I, after Thanksgiving dinner or a really big unexpected meal, or let's say I have a lot of dairy after being vegan that kind of like bothers my stomach, I would take this. I wouldn't take it every day, I'm saving it for the baby. Also because of the diuretic in there, it did make me very hungry the next day. But since I had that issue with the other magnesium, the ocean minerals, I've been just testing everything first. When I start to notice he's starting to get backed up, I'll do this first. If that doesn't work, then we move on to the calm magnesium and the other ocean minerals is every single day. By the way, there is another magnesium called MAG07 that a lot of people like better than ocean minerals. It's very similar. It has minerals and all that stuff in there. Do your research. I'm not getting both of those. It's just like now I'm just adding money on. So that's another $30. That was around 30. This was around 20. People have complained. It comes about this full. It's worth it for me. His ticks are gone except for when he gets super excited. He does the excited one, but I don't know if that's just normal for a child, my child. Other than that, zero ticks completely. Obviously it's from being off of the miracle accident, but I don't know if the ones that are still there are just normal. Does that make sense? Does that make sense is my favorite thing to say in this video too. They sell this at Target now, but I'm gonna put a link to it from Amazon. I think they were doing like a prime in October right now. So grab it. It's definitely, this is part of that sale because I got a couple emails from the company. This is great. So those are the supplements we've been doing. They've been working really well. I changed him per one of your guys, one of your guys. Wow. <laughs> My English. We went from cow's milk to goat's milk. They say that they say the, the suggestion was to get babies off dairy completely. Now, my baby is still a baby. He does not eat well. And I was like, well, is goat's milk dairy? I don't know. So I looked it up for you guys that are like me and we don't know. No shame here. I had no idea. Any milk that comes from a mammal, which I guess is all milk, is considered dairy. So even like my milk is dairy. Weird, right? I know. But they say that actually camel's milk is the closest to human milk. Uh, your girl lives in the United States. I don't know where I get camel's milk, but goat milk, goat's milk is a lot easier to digest for a human than cow's milk. And it's very, very in line, very close to human milk. So I guess it's like human milk, camel milk, goat's milk. Maybe there's other ones in between. I don't know, but he handles that. He digests it. Most people do better than cow's milk. Eggs I've discovered are extremely constipating for him. Obviously eggs are dairy. Sometimes we forget that. 
your girl too. I've tried to eliminate them. I noticed this past week I was giving them to him a little more. There were a couple times we were out. We didn't expect to be out. We had family in town. We ran to like a breakfast joint and it was the one thing on the menu he could have. Now, a lot of times I will travel with food with me, ice packs, it's fine but I just didn't know I'd be out. So I didn't have any pouches or anything like that for him. I did, by the way, put him back on just fruits and vegetables for a little while. And then of course with his milks. And then I started added, adding stuff back in because he needs it. So he does lean meats, he does a lot. He loves fish, which is great. No nuts or nut butter, I can't do it. Thankfully there's no allergy, allergy as far as anaphylaxis, a peanut allergy, but nut butter, even because he loves it so much i feel so bad even if i let him lick the spoon it'll cause constipation to the point where i need an enema so that's eliminated for now hopefully once i can get him to regularly drink water we'll bring it back in apparently i was like this according to my mom when i was a child i cannot speak to my mom for you guys that are like yeah right you're lying no this was a conversation we had way back when she was on chemo because her stomach was bad apparently it's on from her side of the family do you guys care i don't know i just talked about my bowels but the point is i made myself regular with my diet and my liquid intake and we'll get him there too. It's just trial and error because he's a baby. No bananas, no anything rice. So unfortunately he loves like the rice teeter crackers and a lot of baby snacks are made with rice or brown rice. I just can't give it to him. I feel terrible, but you know, we'll give him other snacks. He likes a lot of other things. Also, I'm gonna get my phone because I started making him what I'm calling a digestive shake. He loved it in the beginning. Now he's kind of like over it, but we'll just kind of introduce it and then take it out when he's over it. But you guys, this worked like a charm. It could work for you as an adult. So it's two kiwi, but here it is. Kiwi with the skin on it. And what I'm assuming is the skin probably acts kind of like Brillo through your intestines and pushes things through. So two kiwi with the skin, I would suggest number one, washing them very, very well. And number two, getting organic because you're leaving that skin on there. So the pesticides, if it's non-organic, is going to probably cause a problem, not cause a problem, but just know that you'll be ingesting pesticides and that might have an issue on the gut. Listen, I understand, I don't do all organic. I try to do as much organic for the baby, I can't. And somebody in one of the groups was like, well, you shouldn't give your child almond milk or oat milk, and I try not to. I was in the beginning, but I realized it's all like gums and fillers, and one, that's bad for them, and two, that can wreak havoc on the gut and start stripping it more, and that's where these issues came from. But you need to make your own. Okay, elitist. The amount of nuts that it takes to make almond milk, which I used to do for myself when I was single, I was not a mother and I wasn't expected to pay rent. I was taking care of my mother at that point, living with her. I made my almond milk. What happened? We had a freezer filled with ground almonds that I wound up having to throw away because I had nothing to do with them. You can only hide so many almonds and things, right? And I can't give them to the baby. He can't have nuts. And Adam and I don't need that all of those extra nuts and calories in our diet. So the point is who can afford that many nuts? oats, whatever it is. So thank you, elitist. Like, and people in those groups, I don't know why they're like, well, you have to do this and you can't do this. And you're stupid for giving your baby dairy. Okay. Let's all work. Let's all work together and do the best that we can and try to help each other figure this out. Anyway, the point is if you could do organic, that would be the best. If not wash it really, really well. And I would wash it in white vinegar just to kind of like dissolve whatever pesticides are on there. Then you want papaya. What papaya is gonna do is it's filled with digestive enzymes. Even like if anybody in my family needs a clean out, I will chop up papaya and I'll give it to them. Is it the best tasting thing? Most people don't think so, but if you mix it in a fruit salad with other fruit, I promise you can get it down. So two kiwi with the skin some papaya, doesn't have to be measured, just throw it in the blender. I put in blueberries because frozen blueberries, because first it helps make the shake cold. Second of all, there's tons of health and antioxidants in there. And three, it just gives it a sweeter flavor. And then chia seeds, I don't measure, I just throw them in there. I've been putting chia in everything for him. Non-dairy yogurt, which I'll tell you a trick for that. So chia seeds in everything, they help push everything through. They've really helped him like TMI. Sorry, if, if you have a weak stomach and you made it this far, skip this part. But I doubt you do, because you made it this far. I, I could see them coming out. So they really help. So I'll put chia seeds in that shake. I'll give you the recipe for what I do with his yogurt for when he's over the shake. And then what else is in the shake? Oh, and then some sort of liquid, whether you do nut milks, whether you do goat milk, whether you just want water, whether you want prune juice, just put a little bit, doesn't matter. Put the liquid in there, blend it all up. I feed it to him with a spoon. He was loving it in the beginning and like literally 
did not need it. Just boom, head full diapers. In fact, I've been on the hunt for some papaya because I want to make it for him again, freeze it, and then give it to him when he wants it. Okay, the yogurt situation. I found a brand that is pretty clean. It is Forager brand. There we go. This is probiotic cashew milk yogurt. And for a while I was getting the vanilla one until stupid, didn't think about it. I looked at the ingredients one day and there was like 20 something grams of sugar in one little container. And it was, they were the individuals. So I was like, well, that's not gonna work because sugar is gonna strip the gut again. And we're trying to heal his gut as much as possible because the stripped lining of the gut is what caused or was part of the cause of this issue. That's why we're trying to eliminate as much dairy as we can, etc. So these ingredients are pretty clean. Cashews, coconut cream. There is a little bit of gums in there, but it's the best that I've found non-flavored. I took dates, a bunch of dates. I got this from Costco. Medjool dates, they're already pitted. And I'll just take like a whole bunch out, just a handful. I'll boil some water, put them in a cup, pour the water over them and let them sit for a couple of hours. It'll rehydrate them. That water will get really sweet. The dates themselves will get really soft. I blended the dates. Actually, you guys, that's a trick for very healthy caramel, just so you know it tastes like caramel. Blend it up and then I just mix it in here. I did in this one, because I was gonna try it, I got pure vanilla extract. I don't even think I'm gonna use that next time because I didn't taste a difference. And that is his sweetened yogurt because I didn't want to use like a fake sweetener and I didn't want to use sugar. Oh, also I don't have, I don't have it in here because I finished it. Let's see if it's in the garbage. This is dairy milk, like cow's milk. I could find it dairy free, but I was afraid of the gums and fillers, but this is kefir, which is a probiotic. It's kind of like a yogurt, but it's very thin. It's like a liquid. It's like a very thick, creamy, somewhere between milk and yogurt consistency. Like if you mixed milk and yogurt together and you poured it out, that's what the consistency is. So what I do in his bottles, because I don't want to give him all that dairy or that dairy, but I want him to have the probiotics. This I know goat milk is really expensive. I will do a couple ounces of goat's milk, couple ounces of kefir, couple ounces of prune juice, and then coconut water. Like I play with it. It's not an exact science or anything like that, but just depending on his stomach's needs that day, that week, then I always in every bottle, I mix in this. And then if he needs, if he's getting more constipated, I will mix in this. And then on days when he's very, very constipated and he needs a clean out, that will go in there as well. I'll go through your comments and see if anything is pressing that needs to be discussed. Okay, Junie said, doctors are trained to prescribe drug, drugs, if I'm paraphrasing, but if I took everything the doctor prescribed, I'd basically be living on pills and she's right. So she said, be your own advocate. A bunch of you guys said, be your own advocate, do your own research. Thank you guys, yes. See, this one's very interesting because Marissa said her daughter was chronically constipated and she specifically remembers her doctor telling her the miracle laxative is horrible and not to use it. Why are other doctors saying that it's, are they getting paid off for it? Okay, we're not going there. Nurse Rachel, who's a nurse, says the name of it in here. So go look at that comment if you need. A couple of people were really upset saying that they've given this to their child and they have some issues neurologically and they have some diagnoses. First of all, I am so sorry. It could be related. It could be unrelated. I was at a point where I was beating myself up. Like I, I just gave my son these issues. So I had to take a couple steps back swallow my tears because it sucks and I'm so sorry and you feel so violated by your healthcare professional but I just had to empower myself to be like okay now what am I going to do moving forward easier said than done I promise you I know I would get on this stuff get off of that stuff and watch your baby and your baby is your baby no matter how old they are and just see if any type of behaviors or issues that they have subside for example a lot of the parents on there have children who are either autistic or show autistic behaviors and they had some serious behaviors constant behaviors behaviors for anyone that doesn't know is a behavior kind of out bursts in autistic children. At least that's the way that I'm aware of. That's how my best friend who has been teaching autistic children for her profession for God, 25 years. That's how she refers to the behavioral outbursts as behaviors. So just watch and see if those behaviors lessen when they come off of the prescription if, or the non-prescription, but the pharmaceutical. There you go. Okay. And then we had some other suggestions, which I thought were great. This is a mix of a cup of bran, a cup of applesauce, a half a cup of prune juice. They use it in group homes and hospitals all the time. She said it's 
gets natural and it gets things moving. So there's another recipe for you guys. Pear juice for constipation, somebody else suggested. She mixed it with water so it wasn't too sugary for her baby. She said it actually caused blowouts. So for us, pear didn't work. You see what works for you for your own baby. Somebody said that I had a very similar reaction to the miracle laxative. All my muscles, even my tongue would freeze and go stoic. I kept having to go to the ER and get Benadryl shots to unfreeze. That's insane. Why is this still being used? Another person suggested uh, fish oil for omega-3 DHA, and she goes every time she takes it. I did look into that for the baby. I took it during pregnancy, even though it was a little controversial, no issues. My doctor was fine with it. I think he's just a teeny bit too young because of like the diuretic, but something I probably will add in and just not do it every day. Thank you for the reminder. Paula said, I've known about this miracle laxative for quite a while. It's the chemical word propylene glycol slash antifreeze. She said, try giving your sweet Christian some caro, K-A-R-O, caro, caro syrup or table syrup if he still takes a bottle, which he does. Also milk with magnesia, which is magnesium. So I'm basically using that just different form of it and the baby probiotics. So thank you. This says, this kind of relates in a weird way. She got spring-like coils inserted into her fallopian tube. They're supposed to be better than getting your tubes tied. Well, it turns out that they're very toxic and cause a bunch of issues. I had to have a hysterectomy and have lifelong issues. I also am allergic to my Self due to the damage they've caused. Doctors don't believe us when we say the coils caused this. The company also said they don't cause harm, which they do. Thankfully, they are now off the market, so no other woman will suffer due to this. Those coils ruin my health and life. Sharing this story about your son is the best way to fight back. Parents need to be made aware of this. I've learned with my baby and through your stories, we're all just guessing. Doctors are more of an educated guess, but at the end of the day, we're all just guessing. Go back to my baby had COVID video and you'll see that he was misdiagnosed by two doctors before we finally got the COVID diagnosis. But the point is, we're all just guessing. They're guessing. Is that their fault? No, but you're absolutely right that we need to advocate for this and we need to really research what we are putting in our in our bodies and our children's bodies. And unfortunately, sometimes it's too late and I'm so sorry that this happened to you. Okay. This is gonna be the last comment because it's really, really important. She said, my son is four, he's autistic and have never has never once been constipated. Doctors will say something and just roll with it. So what she's referring to is one of the doctors that was interviewed during this whole situation when a child was given this miracle accident wound up going into a drug induced psychosis, harming a family member. A doctor came on and was like, well, he was just predisposed to that anyway. Kids that come in and are autistic or this or that, the brain and the gut are so closely related that those kids are gonna be constipated anyway. So trying to kind of take any kind of, what's the word, responsibility off of the drug being the problem and saying that it's just, it, it's just the child. So she's debunking that doctor's myth Thank you. I'm gonna stop here. Thank you guys all so much for your amazing comments. I read every single one of them. I went on Instagram and I hope I answered every question. I answered every one that I saw. There's that whole other box situation. For somebody who does social media a lot, I suck at it. But if you guys need me, it's at row underscore Clawson on Instagram. If you have more comments, if you have concerns, you can put them in the comments here. I love you guys so much. We will be back next week with a true crime video that I've been teasing for like weeks. It's the one that started me on wanting to do more, talking about more cases, and we're gonna finally get there. Whoa, it's crazy. There's a tease for you. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one.